Hey everyone, Rogold here, and today we are talking about secret bosses within The Division 2. Everybody has heard of the Hunter puzzles, I'm sure, with the variety of masks that you can collect across New York and DC, but did you know that there are additional secret bosses and boss puzzles within the game? Well, if not, you came to the right place. It's been a big goal of mine as of late to sprinkle in some more new player and just informational content in with my usual stuff when I can, and so far that's been met with wonderful response, so thank you all so much for that. And so, we're carrying on with that today with this. I will say, however, even if you are a more veteran player, there might be one or two of these that surprise you. Some of them are quite hidden. I'm going to rank these in order of complication, how easy or hard it is to spawn them in, so feel free to skip around using the timestamps down below if needed. This should be a lot of fun. If you end up enjoying the video, a like would be super appreciated, and be sure to click that subscribe button as well as turning on the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of my future uploads. Let's get into this. Starting with what is both a menacing boss and a super cool real life easter egg to the development team on the game. What you're going to want to do first is make your way to this location that I am standing at. This is over in the Constitutional Hall zone of the map off of 21st Street and C Street. You'll be standing in front of a ramp leading down to a garage and that's where we want to head into. At the bottom of the ramp you're going to take a right and hug that right wall all the way to the far end of the garage where you will take another right through the blown open hole in the wall. Once inside there you'll find yourself in a sewer tunnel and take a right once once more and follow that tunnel as far as it goes. Before too long, you'll come across another hole in the wall on the left-hand side. Head through there. Now you're going to be inside of this kind of industrialized metallic room. You're going to want to follow where my character is going. All you have to do is just hop down below that initial platform and underneath the walkway here, you're going to find an X on the ground. It's a little faint, but you'll see it there right under the light. All you're going to need to do to spawn this boss is stand on that X and use the jumping jacks emote. Keep in mind this is a free emote that everybody owns, so either equip it to your wheel or scroll through the catalog on the UI and perform it while standing on that X and it doesn't take long for Yannick the Beard to spawn in. Now this is a great little easter egg if you're unaware. Yannick is somebody on the dev team who has been with the franchise all the way back to the first game. He used to be one of our community developers but over the years he's risen the ranks and for the past few years now he's served as the game's creative director. So this is an awesome tribute that they have for him in game and he's a tough boss. Easily the toughest of any of the ones we're going to cover here. Very much has the AI and lethality of a hunter so it's a fun fight. There are no exclusive rewards or loot to be gained from beating him so just keep that in mind. Uh, but it's a fun secret to uncover, nonetheless. Next up, a much less known boss and a much more intricate one to spawn without a doubt. You're going to want to head over to the Coney Island Amusement Park main mission accessible via your Mega Map or the Helicopter Pilot, and the first step is to run through the mission until you reach the Giant Skull, where you enter into the Haunted House portion of the mission. Prior to that, no need to worry about doing anything, just get to this point. Upon entering it is where we're going to start looking out for four total red-eyed rats that we need to shoot down. When you reach the first room of the Haunted House where there's a cluster of enemies, take them all out so you're not getting shot while while trying to do this. After that, you're first going to approach this house decoration over here. There's a green light above it, and if you look down in the doorway on the left side floor, you'll see our first rat. You just need to shoot it once, make sure the eyes turn off, and you know you're good to go. Then you want to step back towards the center of the room, and on the left side of the door leading into the next room, look up the castle wall all the way at the top, and you'll see the second rat. Shoot it, check for the eyes to turn off, and move on. Next room, same deal, take out all the enemies. Then, if you're standing in the middle of the room, turn back around to look towards the door in which you entered from, and to your left, way up in the rafters, you'll see our third rat. Shoot, eyes out, move on. Last one is very easy to find. It's in the room in which you have to go into in order to interact with the laptop and get the dialogue for the mission. When you enter in, check your hard left, and you'll see behind these wires is the fourth and final rat. So, now that you've shot all four, what this does is spawn in a secret boss along with the usual waves of cleaner enemies that spawn at this part of the mission. So, interact with the laptop, go back into the larger room, deal with the first few waves of enemies, and shortly after, you'll see that Radigan has spawned. Fitting name for sure. Nothing too special about this guy, definitely the least unique of the bosses we're going to go over in this video. He also has no exclusive rewards or loot, same as the others, but despite all of that, it's still a fun secret to do. Okay, last but certainly not least, we get to our final boss. Easily the most complex to perform, but also the coolest boss of the three, I would argue. For this one, you're going to want to come to the Manning National Zoo, again accessible via your map or the pilot. And the first step here is going to be to go all the way through a good chunk of the mission up until the crocodile pit. Once you clear out the pit, you're going to find yourself standing where I'm at immediately afterwards, and this is where the puzzle takes place. Now, there's a lot of ground to cover here distance-wise, and it can get confusing pretty quickly, so I'm going to show my map location 
orientation for each step here. And if you open your map from the starting position here, I think it's pretty easy to orient yourself within this little area. And hopefully that makes it easy enough to follow along with where I'm going here. So firstly, you're just going to step right on up to this first beehive. These hives are where you're going to be watching out for. And all you have to do is shoot it up a little bit, paint the target if you will. And soon enough, you'll see the bees are swarming around it. It's a bit harder to see like this in the dark, but just make sure that you can see the little swarm of bees after you shoot each hive and you'll be good to go. So that's the first one. Then you're just going to want to turn right and go right up the short hill here. And here's the map location for the second hive and same deal, shoot it and watch for the bees. After that, you're going to want to come back down the hill, go past the starting location and up towards where the mission usually guides you. And on the right side of the pathway, you'll soon come across the third hive. I'll show the map location, shoot it and move on. After that, go right up the stairs you're standing next to, but instead of going in the usual tunnel entrance, stay to the left. And you'll find the fourth hive at the far end of this pathway. Here's the map location. If you need it, you know what to do. Okay, lastly, this one is a bit of a hike. You're going to want to go back down and cross that main road, the main path of this area, and you're heading up towards the wolf habitat. You can either go through the habitat or take the back pathway like I am, however you prefer. But you'll see that once we're at the top, we have our fifth and final beehive. Here's the map location. You can kind of see the routes that I took to each hive there. Shoot this last one, and then you're on to the final step. Head back down through the wolf habitat, and you want to go right to where the third beehive was located, this kind of illuminated exhibit right here off of the main pathway. And if you approach the touch panel in front of it, you'll see that once you clear out all of the hives in the correct order, it is now interactable. And in doing so, we'll open a door just in front of you where the agony will spawn in. Now, he's pretty cool. It's an outcast heavy, but one who has access to a rocket launcher, which is not a combination you find anywhere else in the game, I believe. And between that and the usual sledgehammer, he also has a stinger hive that he'll throw at you. You. So, you know, not a raid boss or anything, but he's got some armor. And again, because of that unique weapon and enemy archetype combo, I'd say this is easily the coolest of the secret bosses here. The Agony is definitely a fun encounter. Once more, there is nothing exclusive to be gained from fighting him. So if nothing else, do it for the thrill of dodging these rocket launcher shots. All right, everybody, that is a guide and walkthrough on how to spawn three hidden bosses in The Division 2. I very much hope you enjoyed and hope you learned something. As I said, I'm sure most veteran players know about most of these, but you never know, especially with Radigan and the Agony. I wouldn't be surprised if some were unaware of them. And if so, I hope you enjoyed seeing them in action. And of course, for anybody newer to the game or hearing about all of this for the first time, I hope this was informative and entertaining. Let me know your thoughts on not only these three secret bosses, but also the concept of secret bosses in general, folks. Is it something you enjoy, something you'd want to see the dev team do more of in the future. I think for me, I'd be down, but only if they added at least some small little reward for defeating each one. The puzzles are fun, but it would be nice to have a little something to go after. Let me know any and all of your thoughts, though, and I will be super curious to read through them. That's going to do it for me today, everybody. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Rogue Gold.